over 15 years. The snow meant Baz didn't drive fast. He told himself that was the reason the police would show a lot of interest in his driving record if they caught up with him, and no insurance would cover the damage Saul would do to Baz if he dented the truck. Saul's truck rumbled slowly along the white street alongside the tracks to the place where they'd been earlier that night. He pulled his brother's cap over his head, deliberate, deliberate in everything now, killing minutes, extending the gap between decision made and decision enacted. Finally, he took a deep breath, shut off the engine, left the keys dangling in the ignition ready for his return. Without further deliberation, he got out, ducked through the broken fence, and kept to the shadows, breath steaming from him, its own kind of apparition. His mother had used ghosts for her own purposes, that much Baz understood. She had told fortunes, divined the future. Ori had told him about it, anger in his eyes, explaining why she'd gone and why they weren't going to talk about it. You don't use them, Baz, you let them go, he'd said. Not that Ori had been particularly good at letting go of anything, but Baz understood the principle. The thing was, that meant ghosts were useful, useful for otherwise hidden information. And Baz didn't think his mother was evil, not like Ori had insinuated. He had no idea how the calling of ghosts worked, but he had to try. Their father's ghost was gone, Saul had seen to that. But his brother had also said that there were many more ghosts down by the tracks and the ghosts had come when Baz had sung. They didn't talk about that either, neither brother nor father, why Baz was only allowed to sing in the car. Nobody talked about anything of importance. The sound of metal moving on metal came to him from across the tracks, the smell of cold, of iron. He sang, self-conscious at first, tentative. His heart tripped high in his chest, only the one song though before he halted, hunkered down like he'd seen Saul do one hand on the ground. Screw it, it was like trying to fix an engine blindfolded. Okay, Bass whispered, teeth clattering in the night. Where the hell are you guys? Only the wind and the far call of engine and train whistle. Another song, and he definitely was unnerved because ghosts might be all around him and he couldn't see a damn thing. The moon was behind clouds now and the yard was all line and smudge and blur. Hey, Come on, I need a favor. He felt open, felt seen, felt cold fingers run across his hand. He startled, drew his hand back from the ground, shaking. Wind, maybe. Then, beside him, behind him, beyond the chain link at his back, gravel shifted, skirled. Baz held still, wouldn't see anything, even if he looked. Maybe all this was predicated on not looking. Who knew? Maybe this was his way with the spirits, different from Saul's. As long as it wasn't one of the railroad bulls coming to check out what ba why Bass was in the yard. The gravel crunched again, sound of lifeless bleak density shifting in the night. Then a jagged breath, a cancerous intake of air over scar tissue and through blood frothing in the lungs. Bass held very still, hand back out against the ground, fingers aching cold. A favor? The question rattled from behind. Not a rattle, a chuckle. Baz licked his lips quickly, half hoping it was a cop, telling himself that it was a cop. Yeah, no biggie, uh, just you want to know where she is. No cop. Despite himself, Baz looked. He couldn't see anything at first. And then, behind the chain link, metal holding it back somehow like that might matter, a dark haze as insubstantial as smoke, Still on his haunches, Baz pivoted on the balls of his feet, faced it, though that was the wrong word. There was no face. There was nothing. There was nothing. Are you a ghost? Because this didn't feel like a ghost, and he'd never seen a ghost in his life. The thing just chuckled again, shifted. I don't answer questions. And it drifted down track, away from Baz. No time to second guess what this was, ghost or not, because he hadn't come here just to drive opportunity away. Wait, and the black smudge stalled. Baz straightened, tried to steady his voice. Yeah, a favor, that's what I need. The sound of amusement came again, covered by a rough cough like the air didn't suit it. Faites attention, needing is dangerous, Basile Salazar. 
Baz's heart banged like a pinball in his chest, and he put his hand to his mouth, blew on it, covering up his shaking. Perceptive for a ghost, if that's what this was. The thing came closer, but didn't seep through the fence, seemed contained, and Baz hoped it was. I don't need to know where she is. I'm just curious. Such a lie, and he wondered if it could tell. Just want to know if she's okay. The thing laughed again. Not so? What are you offering me? Hey, Baz complained, eyebrows inching up. I already gave you two songs. Only the wind again, and Baz couldn't see it, and he wondered if he'd said the wrong thing. Finally, though, like the wind had shifted it, the black smudge appeared again on the periphery down track a little way. As Baz watched, it solidified slightly, crabbed along. It didn't move like smoke. It darted, backtracked, zipped unnaturally. Despite the keen, freezing air, Baz broke out into a sweat. Your songs? Like he'd served up dog shit. Fine, what do you want then? I'm doing you a favor, boy, it said, but it kept its distance. Being nice. Baz knew that it wasn't, and he found he didn't care. Nice? He repeated, buying time. What do you want? Made him ask twice, and Baz hated that. Want or need, the thing said, playing, past chiding him about his questions. No, Biggie, it repeated, without any trace of humor. We can settle up later. And it shambled away, and Baz let out an involuntary sound of protest like something was being taken from him, wrenched out, a hot, dark hand on his chest. The creature stopped, and Baz heard it chuckle again. In your pocket, child. It dissipated between one moment and the next, maybe between blinks, and Baz shook where he stood, hot and frozen beyond measure, dreading it, head so light, he thought he might blow away or fall down, Baz reached into his coat pocket with a chilled hand, fingers bone white, bloodless, trembling. He withdrew what he found there, a scrap of paper, a ripped corner of unidentified newsprint, letters and numbers scrawled with a malfunctioning ballpoint pen, an address, his own handwriting, an answer and a promise made in the night, and Baz wondered what he'd be made to pay for this gift. They were once known as angels from the sky and heaven, but now.